recording. All right. Well, tonight I'm going to kind of be early. I was late last month. I'm going to be early. I had a headache most of this afternoon, so I still can't deal with the watercolor that we left off with our little rats. I don't even know where I put them now. A little micey. I think I know what I'm going to do, but I'm just not in the... I don't have the mindset to do it. I think I'm going to come in on this is what I've decided is use like some white and lavender and like a light brown and a dark brown and get the detail in here in some places, but it'll still have the purple. And on him, I'm going to use like a white, a, like a celadon green and some beigey brown. So I can, and I'm just going to add in like the fur. And I think that'll add in the details and fix that. But I'm, it's going to be little rigor work using the, I'll probably just use the rigor and start up like at the top and work my way down. And I just don't have the, the patience to, for that today. I'll go cross-eyed. So what I decided to do is March is the 1920s. So I'm going to do my across the decades for March. So I'm just a couple days early. So it's the Jazz Age or the Roaring Twenties. And you'll notice that the colors are real pale or pastel. And when I was looking up the fashion, it was real interesting because they really talked about like how often they changed clothes. They had an at-home dress, which would be like cotton, gingham looking, apron-ish. Still had the real low waist and the big pockets. It almost looked like an apron in the front sometimes. Then they also started wearing the walking suit, which they would wear if they went out shopping or if, like to meet someone for lunch. And that was either a crepe de chine or a wool and it was usually two pieces sometimes it was one dress the hats were much smaller you started seeing berets the tricorn and the cloak I'm not sure how they pronounce that the only time you saw bigger hats were more like garden parties they would have wear, still wear the big hats and then this is where you're starting to see the tea gown come in because your the length is above the ankles you're also starting to see, because more girls were going to college, sorority clothes, like the knits. So they've come along where they can make manufactured knits. So you're seeing sweaters and skirts and sportswear. The women that were playing golf or driving cars were sometimes wearing the knickers and some of the loose pants, um, almost like a pajama pant. That And that might have been more even like an at-home type thing. You're also seeing the flappers during this time, which we all know, you know, it's the short with the fringe and the beads. Because a lot of it was about partying. They also said, when I was looking up the history, that the U.S. wealth doubled after World War I during the 1920s. Well, then, of course, we all know that it crashed in 1929 when the stock market crashed, but you have prohibition. Um, more people are living in the city than there are on farms. You have the spirit of St. Louis flight. Um, women got the, the 19th Amendment passed and women got the vote. Architecture, it really just talked more about there's a big building boom because people have all this money and they're building houses with conveniences like electricity and indoor plumbing and air conditioning and all of that is becoming more popular. Art um, deco is the majority of the style of the new homes. But you're also seeing those kits like from the Sears where you could buy a house in a kit and put it together. Um, some of the inventions, first U.S. radio station, the Band-Aid, uh, first drive-in restaurant, lie detector, audio meter to check uh, hearing, 
traffic signal, but I thought we read the traffic signal was earlier than that, so it might be debated. Automatic watches, bulldozers, instant camera, loudspeakers, TV, garage door openers, um, the first liquid rocket, so they're starting the space program, starting to get more advanced. Jukebox, garbage disposal, uh, pressure washers, electric razor, sunglasses, so they're really starting to learn how to use electricity in the machines. So I thought some of that was interesting. Um, and a lot of it is about convenience. Notice in the 1910s, a lot of it was like things to use in your house to clean your house. And you're seeing a little bit of that, like with an um, automatic, you know, like the washing machine and the vacuum and some of those things were right before the 1920s. All right, so let me set that aside because it's got wet paint. And I'm going to use her. She's from a coloring book. She's from the Roaring Twenties coloring book. And It Had to Be You was, re it was 1924. And it says it was renewed, so it might actually have an earlier date. But that's when the, the copyright was renewed. And then I pulled, I thought this pink and green paper would be good with her. They're a little bright and I kind of like this jelly printed piece because it's got the I don't have a lot of pastel stuff but I also thought that these are uh, stickers that are like borders might be good to use. These are tickets from the Majestic Theater in Stephenville. I thought they were the right color. They'd be kind of fun. It's the Jazz Age, so this is just like a little magazine cover where they're dancing. I, th I liked this set of butterflies as an accent piece. And I also thought on this same thing, I might use these little corner squares somewhere. Um, I don't, this might be too big, I think. And let's see, let's look in here and see. I think I had a quote. I think I have something about the women's vote. If I didn't use it already. I need to print some more of this little stuff. Love all, trust a few, do wrong to none. That might be a quote we could use. I don't think I'm going to use that. It's too big. Uh, like I said, I think there is a... If I didn't already use it, that Paris might work. Obviously, you're going to have more travel going on because people were mobile, more mobile with cars and airplanes starting to be more prominent. I normally dig all this stuff out before. Nope, nope, nope. All that's no. I may have used it. It's kind of pretty. I don't see it. I must have used it. So we'll just go with what we have. One of those. I also had these words and I thought that might might use that just as an 
interest. So hello to everybody that came in. Beth and CB, Carrie Ann, Kimberly, Linda, Mindy, Phyllis, Janet, Shells, Beth and Phyllis, I don't think I know you, but welcome. All right, so I'm going to set this little stuff to the side. And let's start with, I know I want to use this, but I think it needs to be cut down. Skinnier. Because I don't want it to cover up. I don't want it to cover up the title of the song. So I think I'll put it something like that. It doesn't look straight. I'm going to try that again. I don't know if I had that bottom on the edge perfectly straight. Take a little bit more off. That looks a lot straighter. There's no guarantee the bottoms were squared up to begin with. All right. This print's bigger. She has to look this way, so she has to go here. I'm going to put that in the corner. And then I think I don't want that pink under her because, well, we'll try it. I think it's just a bigger corner. And just layer them. And then I want the blue down here. And we could put that, might be pretty, just right there on there, on top of that. And let's maybe have her almost standing on the tickets. I have a few more of these tickets. I might be able to get the tickets to go more across. I can find one more. Had a whole bunch of these, so I think there were a couple of them loose. I don't see that, so maybe it'd be better just with those three there. Maybe one can go up there. The other thing I thought about is using these on either side. I think I'm going to use this quote by Shakespeare. I'm 
maybe this little Paris perfume back there. I don't think I'm going to use that at all. This is what I typically do. I just like take a whole bunch of stuff out and then move it around and play with it. I think this is too grungy for what she's wearing. I think I'll bury them in the background. I may also put a, like a wash to tone these two scrapbook papers down. Because they're like I said, they're a little they're a little bright for the period, but the green I have on here is actually a pretty good match to this green. But it might help set the pink apart to just a little wash on it. No. I think I'll leave it like that. And then I need to find a paper to put the quote on. And I'm thinking maybe something in this beige gold this pad I just got has some metallics. Let me flip in there and see if there's anything in there that we can use with that metallic. They're awful big because they're There's a geometric in here. That might work. To have it and then maybe the black behind it. Because it's got that metallic. So let me... I'm just going to cut. I don't need a whole lot. I'm just going to cut out a little strip. And then let me find some black. Or actually, I have this. Let's use this. It's kind of a gray. It's a sterling gray, basically, and it's sparkly. So let's put the quote on here. And then we'll mount it on there. And then we'll decide, do we want these on the corners or not? We'll decide that at the time. I'm going to cut them off and we can play with them after we have everything kind of glued in place if we want to put those on the top. Move this other little stuff out of the way. hate when you drop something on the floor and then it just like disappears and it fell straight down so it, where where can it go okay let me get the trimmer and I'm gonna trim that little piece And then I'm going to trim How was everyone else's Monday?
Mine was just one argument after another, basically. I don't know how fifth graders have so much energy to argue. Like I said, this will go in here. I'll probably trim it down just a little more. The gray's a little big, I think. Well, there's some things about ink tints that I don't like. But for the most part, I do like them. I don't use them as often as I thought I would. The other day was the first time I've used them in a long time. And I really want the blocks, I think. Oh yeah, this needs to be. Okay, I want that blue to show because it's just a little different. All right, so let's, I will tell you the other thing that I tend to do is I tend to take a picture with my phone. So that when I take everything off, I have a reference. <laughs> Y'all are too funny. Okay, so I'll put that there. Put all that little bit over there so we don't get it messed up and we'll start with this I wonder if my other brushes if I can use I know it's starting to work I'll try if I can get, get that one to work I need to buy um one of those silicone, like the brushes that the silicone, it's the bristles, and try that for gluing, but I'm not sure how that'll work. I think just get glue stuck on those plastic bristles and they'll get stuck together. I got a little wrinkle in there, but I really don't care. It's going to all get covered so that I can use the pit pins anyways. Again, I got a wrinkle, but I 
kind of like that. And let's take. I'm going to take Americana and it's whitewash is the color. So it's not an opaque. And this brush is wet. And I'm just going to brush on a layer of the white across these papers, mostly the pink. And you can see it's real, uh, you know, you can barely see it because it's. Thought I was buying regular white and ended up buying the white, ordering the white wash. Which I, I like for its uses, but it does not replace your basic white. I think I'm going to take a baby wipe and just kind of make sure that there's not very many strokes in it. Just kind of smooth it out. And so I just really want it to kind of take down that. pink. Okay. And I noticed I've got some bubbles in here a little bit. that I'm going to smooth out. And usually what I do is just take my exacto and just poke some if I needed to get it under somewhere. Alright, I'm going to go back to my picture. That's under her. The tickets, I think I'm going to use some Liquitex. Um, it says gloss heavy, but it's no Goldens. I don't really care for it. It does not work as well as the Goldens does. I'm going to put the tickets down with that a little bit heavier gel medium. Okay. trying to debate if I want to use any paint layers here before we put down I don't want it to be too busy. But I think I will just do a real pale background with the stencil. Cosmetic sponge out. Okay. 
I almost always watch on my phone. Okay. I'm going to mix just a little bit of a melon color with a peony pink. These are Americana. And then just a regular white. I want to mute them down. And I think I'm going to stencil those. But I'm not going to stencil where the I'm not going to stencil where the papers are. I'm just going to stencil where the And a lot of this will get covered up. I am not really a pastel person. So this color palette is a little bit of a challenge to me. some of that it's a little too bubblegum pink I think I like the melon color better that'll be pretty in the background. I think I'm going to add a little more up here. And this little bit coming in off the sides. Now I'll go a little pinker on this one again. And then I'm going to put a little bit up top. Across this top, just, but not on the title. Probably would have been easier to do that before 
I glued the scrapbook paper. But I think it'll be pretty in the background. But let's, uh, let me move this aside. And I'm just going to get a piece of paper. Just regular notebook paper. Uh, copy paper. And I'm going to use that paint up. I'm just going to use the same stencil. And I'll use this in a collage somewhere. And I'll probably variate the colors and not worry. I'm gonna, it doesn't have to be past, and it's not going on this, so it can be whatever. It can be used full strength. But I have to say, I don't have a lot of collage material in pink. It's not my, not my fave. Like I said, that'll be a pretty piece to cut up and tear up using collage when I need some pink. Spill in the try to use all that paint up. put way too much out. Reminds me of wallpaper, this stencil. I think it's a, pretty sure it's a deco arts. It's called Jacquard. So that'll be pretty. My chat didn't freeze. I think it just got quiet. All right, I give up. Just not worry about the rest of that. Some of this before I lay it back down. Get a paper towel. And this should be dry enough now. Okay. This is heavier cardstock, so I think I'll go back to the Liquitex. gel medium and use a little bit of that. I'm going to put a little bit on both sides. And if you can't tell by now, I really like pattern on pattern. Okay. 
Okay. That went down pretty good. I'm going to stick her down next. Still need to tuck that little magazine cover of the dancing couple in there too before she sticks down. So I'm not going to lay her down flat yet. Get them sort of tucked in there. Now I can go ahead and work out any air bubbles. And I like how her dress kind of crosses these tickets down here. I like when the elements kind of uh, cross over each other. Okay. Get some water. Okay. I'm just trying to put some gel medium because I'm going to use the pit markers that way when it's dry I can go anywhere and they'll slide now the question is do I want I don't know if these are yeah they are Too much. So we'll get rid of that. Let me scoot the camera in. It's a little better. Get I still got glue on the table in a couple places. I want to get that off. Alright, so I didn't like that. So let's go ahead and add the gel medium over here. There's something on the top of the bottle dried out. Gunk. And I keep hitting it with my brush. Let me get rid of that. It was across the neck of the bottle and I kept hitting it. Okay. I can put a little more down here. Also, when I use this, a lot of times I get my brush real wet. So it's just a real thin layer everywhere. Okay, so now we're going to, this is a sticker, K and Company, look Ange, one of the butterflies is flying upside down. Okay, so let's put the quote on the metallic. Then let's put the metallic.
this little gray piece. Then let's put this down, kind of right here. Well, get it where you want it and then slide it. It's using the pressure from the brush. push that down okay get rid of that all right let me put up these paints real quick what Tay Tay there's nothing in the closet nope Okay, the question is, do we want these corners here? Or not? All right, let me dry this real quick and then we'll lay them on there and we'll decide. I'm thinking no. I'm going to turn on the heat gun. ahead and sign it over here while I'm thinking about it. So that can dry. And then I'm going to take the gray. This is a uh, cold gray number four. And I'm going to use that Maybe I'm not going to use that one. I think I need to order another set of... I use this one a lot, and sometimes I'm impatient. And they get glue on them. Some of mine are starting to dry out. And I'm just going to blend that so that it's kind of got a drop shadow. It also, um, when I do it in here, will kind of help antique it, depending on which color I use. And these butterflies are raised, so I'm just going to give them a little bit of a of a shadow. 
here and there where just underneath in that you probably can't see it on the screen but up close you can see it because they're I don't know if you can tell they're like three layers and they're raised with like a pop dart So I don't know if you can see sort of how they're raised and how the shadowiness just adds it it finishes the edges I think and if you decide you don't like it you can just take a baby wipe while it's still wet it's not permanent till it dries So like if that's a little more than I want, I can get it wet and pull it back. This is almost always the gray that I use. There's a warm gray, but I don't it's more of a taupe. I don't care for it. Okay, and then I'm going to come under the tickets. See, there was some gel medium. Still damp. oozing out from somewhere. Okay, I'll go around her too in just a few minutes. Before I do that, I am going to go in. Okay, so the next question is, do we want these in the corners? Hi, Ella. They're kind of a peachy pink. Yes or no? I'll wait for the lag. Let me find some. Something else I was going to pull out earlier and I didn't. Let me see if I can find that. Do we like the little corner pieces or not? Is it too much? Okay. Those are not there. Keep them? Okay. Ella says no. Mindy said I've I got one yes and two no's. They might be too much. All right. Let me grab. Right. 
I'm just going to take them off and go with the nose. All right. The other thing I thought I would do is go in and hit her up with a little pit pen. On just some of the edges and you know kind of make it a little more painterly and then that'll do for the green Thank you, Orla. It's one of the few girls I've colored from the color book. See how it just gives it a little more depth? I just thought Hey babe, did you manage to go and not buy anything? All right. Well, yeah, he went to buy something. You just went as a consultant. I like that a little better. I think it's a little richer. And then I'm going to do that. Hat too. And I'm going to do her, oh, her shoes. All right, let's get the cinnamon color. Let me clean my hands. And I'm going to add some skin tone. Not much. And then there's a light flesh. Let me fill in some of that with a lighter flesh. this other hand. And they're knocking over stuff. All right, let me darken her hair a little. And I'm not sure. I have a gold, I think. That's silver. That's brown. There it is. This is a metallic gold. 
I think I'm going to put the metallic gold in here. And I'm going to pull back some of that. And somewhere I have a metallic pink. Or there's this real, real pale. I'm almost thinking about giving this lace like a champagne color. Let's try. I'm going to take some of that gold out because it's too yellow. Well, this is dried out. So let's just go with the... But I do like that pink in it. Let's just get a little bit darker pink. I'll put a pink in it here and there. Like there's an underskirt, which a lot of times they had with the lace, because that's what this is supposed to be, is like lace. That kind of gave it a rosy um, No, why that one? Use it or lose it, I guess. That one's a dead. This is kind of more of a mulberry. Okay, I think that'll do. Let's put those up. We got the gray. So now what I'm gonna, I've got too much yellow down here still. What I'm gonna do is take the gray and come around her, just the outside of her body. If I pull it out, it'll look like a shadow. A lot of times I'll pull it on one side, and then the other side I'll push in. So it's there, but it's barely perceivable. So it'll get in the... Not on her face, but... It'll get in the creases, but barely be visible. I'm also going to do around this edge here of this white paper. Lighten it in some areas and darken it in others. It'll just give it that kind of a little grunge. Sometimes if you use more of a sepia, you'll get more of an antique feel if you need that.
if you want to age the make the paper look more aged There's some yellow in there. I just want to gray it down and ground her feet at the same time. Okay. I think she is done. So like I said, she's early because March is 1920s. But I had her ready. Uh, on a trim on the back, there's a couple places. That need to be squared up. Alright, I'm going to stop the recording. I'm not going to leave yet.